Hello and welcome, my name is Doodle Machine. Thank you for joining me for another Doodles Doodles. So we're gonna do things a little bit differently today. Instead of me recording myself making an entire illustration and speeding it up and talking over top of it the way that I usually do, I'm actually gonna talk while I make the illustration. The goal today is we just wanna do some sort of a night scene. I don't, I'm not really feeling inspired to do anything more than just kind of play around with some paint and textures. We're going to be working in Art Rage. So let's dive in and see how it goes. There we go. I'm up in the corner. I hope I don't block too much of my screen. I want to be able to, uh, to hang out with you guys a little bit while I work. So let's just get started. Let's just doodle around a bit. Let's put a backdrop in behind. The first decision you have to make when you're going to make a picture is what is the shape going to be? Before you even start with your sketches, you have to get a general idea. Usually I make them square because square is just nice and easy. It works in lots of different situations and uh, it's very Instagram friendly. But uh, I think today we'll make it a little more vertical than that. The moon is going to be our subject. Freaky old tree or something over here. Happy little tree. There we go. Let's just put a happy little tree right over here. Tree. Little guy right beside him. Mind. you guys know who that is. Bob Ross, classic Bob Ross style. Ooh, I got an idea, let's put a fence. These are just gonna be silhouettes down here. Sort of like a little farmyard scene, I guess. Some grass and stuff. When you're painting a scene like this, the actual scene is so simple that the subject of the illustration really becomes the style that you do it. There's nothing, there's nothing really here. There's nothing special about this sketch. It's gonna be all about the textures of the paint, the colors, the just kind of mood and vibe that you can get. Simple shapes and simple scenes like this. It's a great practice in um, how to make the style of the illustration. Something more than just a method used to make a picture. It can become the subject of the picture itself. All right, there's my sketch. Let's go with a greenish, bluish, blackish color for our sky. I'm going to want this to have a little bit of a cutout vibe. So I'm going to paint this background piece as if it's one shape, as if it's like a piece of cut paper. So I've painted that and now we are going to carve out these edges. I made a video called the most important technique for digital art. And my most important technique, spoiler alert, was painting and drawing inside shapes. I'm going to uh, include a link below if you want to uh, check out that video. I'm going to use my most important technique now. I'm going to lock the transparency of this layer. And we are going to paint inside this shape. Now at night, the sun sets and then the darkness comes in, but there's usually a, a soft sunny glow on the horizon. I'm not going to actually include like the sun down there, but I feel like, I feel like I should have some sort of lightness down there. I don't want this to be messy. I don't want this to be clean in any way. I want the paint itself to become something just worth looking at. Art Rage is perfect for this kind of thing because you can really just get really messy with the paint, apply different layers of uh, different types of paint and textures over top. Paint can mix around in realistic ways. Some scribbles, let's put some scribbles in this back. Let's make this really messy. As if this was just like one little scrap of paper that was just painted on and scribbled on, tossed away in the trash. Somebody saw it sitting in that trash bin all alone and they were like, hey, that actually looks kind of cool. And they turn it into a piece of art. That's the vibe we're going. Okay, we're going to call that good enough. And I don't feel like the whole thing is dark enough. So I'm going to just um, apply a color adjustment to this entire layer. Bring down the brightness. Oh, there we go. That's, that's the idea. Let's uh, bring up the saturation to the amount of color in it. Here we go, that feels pretty good. I just want to bring a few of these darks down here and we're going to call that done for now. We can always go back and edit that later. So let's put in our foreground, which is going to be very, very dark. Let's make this a little greener. And again, this is going to be like a piece of cut paper. Just kind of cut out, collaged right over top of the background. Lock that transparency and we're going to paint inside this shape. You know that video where I talk about my most important technique? That was my first video that did really well. And it kind of inspired me to keep making more educational kind of content videos. All right, good enough for now. Now let's get some of these other objects in there. Let's get in that moon first. A bluish grayish color-ish. No need to be uh, careful with this. We kind of want it to look wonky. There are lots of subjects I draw a lot. There are, I have, I have a few, a few go-to subjects and one of them is the moon. 
I really am a lover of space, of the night sky. And there are a few ways I like to do stars. You can do dots. You can do these guys, these little uh, snowflake style stars. And you can do good old star shaped stars. I'm thinking in this picture, we're gonna use all three, all three styles of stars. So I'm gonna make a few versions of this star shaped star. So we are gonna to wanna to duplicate it. We don't wanna draw a thousand of these little things, just two or three and duplicate and then rotate them around. When wasting our time on things nobody will ever notice. Now, yeah, Art Rage actually has the ability to use the selection tool to make stars as well. So let's do a little bit of that. Good enough. Now let's uh, let's highlight these things and move them around and make some duplicates. Weird. Look at this little glitch that's happening. See that? Ah, weird. <laughs> Never had that happen before. All right, we got some stars. Let's get one more one more copy of this uh, one more copy of this star right here for the bottom. Actually, I changed my mind. Need another one over here and another one up here. Spread them out in a way that feels really random, but is actually very intentional. You know, I'm gonna, I don't want a million little star layers here, so I'm just gonna merge these layers down, put all the stars onto one layer. There we go, all the stars, and let's add some other styles of stars. These are probably my favorite style of stars, these guys right here. Something really whimsical feeling about them. Now here's something that's important. This drives me crazy when I see this happen. Do not ever put a star in the crescent of the moon. Because if you didn't know, the moon is a sphere and it has a shadow. So you should not be able to see any stars here. It drives me crazy when people put a star there. Because there are no stars inside the shadow of the moon. Unless we're being deceived, which is possible. Make these all kind of different shapes and sizes. A little wonky. Just do some little X's around too. There we go. And let's put some dots, some dot stars. When you're making something like this, like a star field that has to have some kind of randomness to it, there's an important concept, which is called the group of threes. You want to think about things in groups of three. If you have a, a, a set of two things kind of sitting off on its own, it feels very forced and unrealistic if you just have too many little pairs of things around. I don't understand fully how it works, but there's just something more natural. So make sure you spread your stuff out in a kind of random-ish pattern, but then add little clusters of at least three things together. Ooh, I like the way that looks. That's looking good. Happy with that. I don't like this moon quite the way I've drawn it, so I'm gonna change its shape a bit. Should we make it a super skinny moon? That might be nice. I don't usually do super skinny moons, but let's do it. The day for experimenting. Okay, good enough. Now let's um, change the color of a few of these stars. We're gonna lock this transparency, make a few nice and bright white, maybe a few a little bit more bluish. Awesome, 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 awesome. Okay, let's add these other objects to our foreground. We're gonna keep these on their own layer too, because we do want this to have a bit of a cutout vibe. There are certain angles that when I draw it, I got to move my whole body just to get my wrist at that r perfect angle on my uh, Wacom tablet. And carve this out a little bit, make it look a little, little cut out, a little handmade. How are you guys doing? You liking this video so far? I feel like it's super boring, but sometimes watching somebody do their craft is, uh, is interesting enough. If you have any suggestions for future videos, guys, please let me know in the comments below. I'd love to have uh, some more content that's exactly the kind of thing you'd like me to do. If you like this kind of stuff, please let me know. All right, we've got some trees and let's add a little fence. No reason to get fancy with this. It's just a silhouette. Oh, I just had a scare. <laughs> I looked over at my recording software and I saw this stop recording button was highlighted and I was worried that I clicked stop recording. I've done that before. There's been a, there's been a couple doodles that I made the doodle and then realized I messed up the recording somehow so I couldn't show you guys. So uh, make sure you're subscribed to my Instagram account, by the way. That's where I, I always post everything there, even if I don't have a video for it. So like a good fence? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, let's add, um, let's add another layer to the background. So we have the foreground, we have a sort of middle ground, we have a background. Let's add one more layer that's between the middle ground and the background. Some sort of like 
you know, like a hedgerow off in the distance or maybe the, the, the silhouette of some trees back there. We want that to be kind of halfway mm. color between the background sky color and the foreground kind of greenish dark color. So I'm going to paint it with the sky color and then overlay a bit of the greenish foreground color. What should we do? Let's do like a, let's do like a little bit of a pine tree forest on this side. We'll go over our stars. Stars should not be sitting on top of trees. Kills the illusion. Should we do more pine trees on this side? We want the we want this to be maybe be like over here. We want that to be a forest. Just like a few stray pine trees on this side, just to kind of flank in the edges of the uh, the picture. It's, ooh, one hanging off the edge. I like that. That really has a collage type feel to it. Let's put one on this side too. Oh, we got a star on top of a tree. That can't be allowed. All right, now that we have our little mid-ground in there, let's add a couple extra stars before we finalize the colors back there. I am liking this a lot. Okay, so we have our kind of mid-ground. Let's, uh, let's push it into the background a little bit more. So we'll add on a little bit, um, a little bit of this kind of medium-ish color from the background, and a little bit of the green in there. We'll just use a, an airbrush and just a tiny little, tiny little hint of green. So we want that to be kind of the midpoint between the foreground and the background. So it should unify them at least in the color. I'm gonna, just going to bring their brightness down a little bit. Okay, so let's add a couple extra little details to these uh, trees. They're just silhouettes, but we're just going to add on some painty kind of splatty color. All right, I believe we are done with the sketch, so I'm just going to delete that, get that out of there. And uh, I'm going to take this moment to do that oh so important task that I should have done a long time ago and save my work before the program crashes and I lose everything that I've done, which has happened a few times to me in my life, more than I'd like to admit. Let's add some, uh, let's add some like grasses to this foreground. It's looking a little bland. We do some dark ones and some light ones. Here's what I like to do. So you got, you got dark areas like over here and you got light areas like over here. So what you want to do is come over here, sample some of the dark and have the dark kind of work its way over into the light areas. And then sample some of the light areas and have the light areas work their way over into the dark area. Again, rule of threes, you want to keep these little clusters of grass, little sets of three. Now, I don't like the way that my foreground um, grass shape is actually showing the texture of the pieces underneath it. So what you want to do in our rage to make sure that doesn't happen is you change the bump blend mode, not just the blend mode, but the bump blend mode. So here is my foreground shape. And I'm going to change the bump blend mode to replace. So instead of adding the texture of my front object with the texture of the back object, it'll just use the texture of the front object. The texture of the back objects is still there, but it's being completely uh, replaced by the foreground texture. This is so tedious and so boring, but so relaxing and peaceful. I love doing this. It has a great look to it. Put a couple really tall ones just to break up the uh, horizon line there. Some of these medium-ish green tones and bring them into the medium-ish dark areas. This is what I'm talking about, where the style of the piece becomes the subject. Kind of a superficial way to think about the way you uh, are creating a picture, but pictures, they don't always need to have some deep inner meaning. I'll be doing some uh, daily doodles soon of um, it's a I want to do a series where I draw a bunch of YouTubers that I follow, like not famous big YouTubers, but like, you know, the small guys. We all have those YouTubers that are, uh, you know, just starting out or are kind of lesser known. Maybe I'm that YouTuber to you, but I want to do uh, an homage to some of my favorite YouTubers. And because they're not big, fancy million billion subscriber mega monster celeb YouTube celebrities, uh, there's a chance that they will actually maybe respond to my picture and maybe even say thank you. We'll see. That is looking good. Okay, so let's um let's do some drop shadows. We want this to have a real cutout vibe and it already does, I think, but I feel like if we add a couple drop shadows here and there, it would really make some things pop, especially the night sky. Let's do a practice one on the moon here. So we're going to sample the uh, darkest sky color, take a little bit of a darker tone of it, and we're going to be painting uh, some shadows with the airbrush tool. 
but we don't want a lot of pressure. We want to keep it. We keep your shadows very subtle. You don't want it to be too over the top or it has that cheesy kind of computery drop shadow look to it. You don't want to just apply a drop shadow. You want to paint on the types of shadows that would actually exist if this were a piece of cut paper stuck onto another piece of paper. We're going to do some of these stars too. The tiniest little hint. Oh, I actually did a tutorial on this on uh, how to make cutout style illustrations. So uh, I'm going to link that in the uh, description below too. Really good. I'm happy with that. Let's go and do. I wonder if we should do a few of these little line stars. Let's add a shadow to one of them and see how it looks. It's really tedious and it's the kind of thing no one would ever notice, but really sells it as a uh, as a collage. Yeah, I like it. Let's do it at least to a few key stars. Maybe the thicker kind of chunkier stars. Pretty good. Now, if there is a star of this picture, it is the moon. So I feel like this moon needs a little bit more love in the texture department. So let's add on some extra textures and make this moon more interesting. Just a little bit. Hmm. And we'll add some uh, drop shadows to the background objects too. Just a little bit. Just in a few key places to really make it kind of pop. A few really dark shadows in a couple carefully selected places will be enough for the illusion. You don't want to go crazy with the shadows. It, uh, it doesn't look good. But if you put just some, some hint that this is a piece of paper that's cut out. And one more layer to do shadows on. We got to do this kind of these trees. So make a layer beneath the trees and we'll add a bit of a shadow to the trees. Because these trees are dark on top of a lighter background, you do not want to go really, really dark with the shadows. Because it just kills, you see that? How it kills the edge that you've created. You want to keep the contrast. So if you're doing the shadows on a dark object that's on top of a light one, keep the shadows very light. You want them so light that they're basically not even noticeable. It just gives the, the viewer the feeling that this is a piece of cut paper that's kind of floating above or stuck out from another piece behind it. All right, pretty good. Let's see how we're looking. Oh, nice. Yeah, this is what I wanted to make. This is exactly the kind of thing I want. I feel like it's a little a little bare at the bottom, so you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go in at the very, the very end of the zero hour and add some little flowers down here. I might not keep them. Let's just see. Let's just see how they do. Oh, if I love it. Let's let's stick with our rule of three. Make a third little flower. We'll take a good look and see if we want to keep them. Yeah, why not? Let's keep the flowers. Good enough. Okay, and you know what? Now that I look at it, I feel like that moon's a little on the flimsy side. I'm not too proud to admit that I don't make the right decision the first time every time. So, you know what? I'm going to go in. I'm going to beef up this moon. I think I liked it better the original way I had it. There we go. That feels more substantial. The subject of this painting, it's the moon. So let's just uh, let's give it the, at least the space that it needs to uh, shine. But we do want some of those scribbles and some of those random little textures in there. And of course, the drop shadow. It's important. Pretty good. But you know what I want to see? I want to see what would happen if we put one more object here. I feel like it's a little empty. So let's just see what a house would look like. I don't know if I'm going to keep it. But let's just take a look. I feel like, uh, feel like the picture needs a little bit more of a primary subject. Actually, you know what? I really like this. I'm going to keep this house. This house is going to become part of the picture for sure. So let's get rid of some stars. Hmm. Lock the transparency and come in with some extra textures, some extra colors. What I like about our rage is you can come in with like random extra colors that are like obviously way too bright and bold. And then you use your uh, palette knife to kind of just scrape them around and you get kind of these unexpected little colors and, and, and places where there's some texture. You, you didn't make the decision to put it there. It just happened. And your uh, contribution to it is just choosing to leave it. Well, let's put some, uh, let's put like a bright window. Yeah, that's, yeah, let's have like one source of brightness in the entire picture. One bright window in this house. Somebody's up late reading. It'll be like shining out into the darkness. Yeah. This house needs a little bit of detail, so we'll add on some, uh, on some dark places, I think, for maybe some doors, extra window. Let's see, and if uh, anybody actually built any of the houses that I draw, they would not feel like proper houses, to say the least. 
There we go. And last but not least, this house needs a drop shadow now too. Subtle, subtle. Don't go crazy. Don't go crazy with the shadows. Trust me. Just little bits. There we go. Are we done? Are we going to call that done? I think we're going to call that done. Nice. I'm pretty happy with that. Let's take a good one last look here. All right, and that brings us to the end. I hope you enjoyed following along with uh, me making an illustration in Our Rage from start to finish. I know it's a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit more boring than my typical videos. I try and make them a little bit peppier and, you know, the, more like a more like a music video or, or some sort of a showcase or something like that. So I hope you found this enjoyable. Please let me know in the comments below if I should make this kind of video more often. What do you think of my illustration? While you're down there, click the thumbs up button if you like the video and the thumbs down button if you dislike it. Subscribe so you don't miss any of my videos. And as always, thanks for watching.